These mutants don't walk around in spandex and they ain't exactly pretty. So there's only one job open to them, bounty hunting. It's John Wagner and Carlos Escalera's Strontium Dog. Originally beginning in Star-Lord, Strontium Dog was one of the series that survived the merger with 2080 in 1978. Writer John Wagner and Carlos Escala were joined by co-writer Alan Grant in 1980 on what would quickly become one of 2080's biggest series. Following global war, mutants whose bodies have been warped by radioactive fallout are shunned and despised by the norm population. They can either live in crowded ghettos like Milton Keynes or take the only job available to them, hunting down the scum of the galaxy for cash. Johnny Alpha is the best of the search destroy agents, dubbed Strontium Dogs, who, along with his partner, the time-displaced Viking warrior Wolf Sternhammer, operates out of the orbiting space station known as the Doghouse. A dogged bounty hunter, Johnny Alpha's eyes admit alpha rays, which can enable him to see through solid matter and read minds, while he has a whole arsenal at his disposal, from time bombs and electronux to status and blackout grenades, as well as his trusty Westinghouse variable cartridge blaster. He works alongside a rogues gallery of mutants, including lumpy-headed Middenface McNulty, Headless the Torso from Newcastle, and the Joint-Faced Kid Knee. He was also frequently accompanied by nervous alien the Gronk, who acted as his and Wolf's medic. For all of its bleak spaghetti western influences, Strontium Dog has always managed to combine comedy, action, and the bizarre, whether it's traveling back in time to hunt down Adolf Hitler, traveling to another dimension that looked a lot like hell, or rescuing US President Ronald Reagan from mutant kidnappers by teaming up with vampiric strontium dog Durham Red. There's a deep moral undercurrent in the strip. As well as the prejudice and bigotry they face, the mutants differ from those in, say, Marvel comics in that they suffer severe physical deformities and rarely get superhuman powers as a result. Alpha is also a man of hard principles, hunting down the mutant war criminal William Blood Moon, as well as coolly executing Max Bubba and his gang after they murder Wolf. It was revealed that Alpha is actually the son of bigoted anti-mutant politician Nelson Bunker Creelman, who locked Johnny away when he saw his mutation. Young John Creelman ran away and eventually became a leader in the mutant uprising that deposed his father. Creelman's illegitimate son, Lord Sagan, later hatched a plan to banish all mutants to a hellish dimension and was only stopped when Johnny seemingly sacrificed himself. A moment so traumatic for many readers that not only did Carl Siskela refuse to draw it, but it was even referenced in Simon Pegg, Jessica Hine and Edgar Wright's slacker comedy series, Spaced. But that wasn't the end of his story. After two decades of Strontium Dog without Alpha, he was resurrected by Wagner in 2010. A changed man and not for the better, Johnny became involved in a second war against the norms after uncovering a government plot to sterilize Britain's mutants. Legends in their own right, with high octane action and hilarious storylines, Alpha and Wolf remain two of 2080's most popular characters. Their cases are collected in the Strontium Dog Agency files, with the series revival collected in The Creela Conspiracy, Traitor to His Kind, Blood Moon, The Life and Death of Johnny Alpha, and Dogs of War. What do you think about Strontium Dog Earthlit? Show us the love in the comments as we continue our voyage through the universe of the galaxy's greatest comic, 2080.